What does this nearly fatal accident have in common with this stolen yacht, this helicopter rescue, the Goonies, and this really creepy guy? We're about to f around and find out. Tell us everything. Everything. The Columbia Bar at the mouth of the Columbia River is one of the most dangerous bar crossings in the world. Three miles wide and nearly six miles long, Ships require a bar pilot just to get across. Conditions can change from calm to life-threatening in under five minutes. Since 1792, approximately 2,000 large ships have sunk in and around the Columbia Bar, truly earning its name as the graveyard of the Pacific. But the water and the rough conditions aren't the only deadly dangers you have to worry about in the Columbia River. This day is about to turn catastrophic. Hey! Hey! This is the moment where if you hadn't already crapped your pants, you're a better man than I. This boat was completely demolished. You can see where the prop chewed up the stern and the cockpit was completely crushed. But this is just one of many dangerous incidents on the Columbia River. What about this place makes it so treacherous? Could it be the curse of One-Eyed Willie? This brings us to the town of Astoria, situated on the banks near the mouth of the Columbia River. It's also the filming location of one of our favorite movies, The Goonies. And specifically to the house where Mikey lived recently purchased for $1.65 million Thanks a lot. by self-professed Goonie superfan and serial entrepreneur Beeman Zakiri. Welcome to the Goonies house. Seen here offering to sell your kid's bike back to you for a small markup. <laughs> Just in the last two months, I've probably seen it 10 times. I don't give us none of your bullshit stories, huh? <laughs> so this is the actual attic. This is the attic where the magic of Goonies started. Hey, my found a map! Chunk would have done the truffle shuffle probably on a tree stump right about there. Everybody loves the truffle shuffle, but how does it all tie together with the Coast Guard rescue and the curse of One-Eyed Willie? <laughs> this is where the story starts to get crazy. Er. Introducing our mysterious drifter to help us tie it all together. But we'll get back to him in a second. Let's fast forward two days later to the Coast Guard. February 4th. Coast Guard answers a distress call at the Columbia River Bar. The boat has become inoperable. A swimmer's in the water to retrieve the captain. This is insane. What these guys do is amazing. And it's about to get really nuts. Holy Mary, mother of God. Can you imagine voluntarily jumping in the water to go through this? Let's take another look. The swimmer's in the water, headed to the captain. Then out of nowhere, this huge wave. And you can see how tiny the swimmer is compared to this giant wave. The boat is completely capsized. You can't see anything. That boat gets tossed like a salad. But this badass crew and swimmer managed to find the captain and get them both back on the chopper safely. All right, get ready, because it's about to get even weirder. Turns out this motherfucker stole that yacht, and he gave a fake name to the Coast Guard. Get ready, it's all about to come together. Remember our mysterious drifter? Well, it turns out, bizarrely, two days before the Coast Guard rescue, that's right, our bungling boat burglar showed up at the Goonies house with a bag containing a giant dead fish, which he laid on the front porch of Mikey's house incurring the wrath and curse of One-Eyed Willie. Turns out, Willie doesn't like it when you mess with one of his favorite goonies, and he will sink your ship. But what happens when you give a fake name to the Coast Guard and you're wanted for leaving a dead fish on the porch of the Goonies' house? Run! Run! They're coming after you! But he didn't make it too far. They arrested him several hours later, several miles away, in a homeless shelter. If someone's not already writing a script about this to turn it into a movie, they ought to be. We haven't talked about the most amazing part of the story yet, and that would be the Coast Guard helicopter rescue crew carrying Jericho Labani. 
specifically AST Third Class John Walton. Coast Guard rescue swimmers are the unsung badasses of the armed forces. They train in heavy surf at the Columbia River and go through months and months of extensive diving, rescue swimming, and physical fitness training to be the best of the best. Full Sin Fleet loves all of the armed forces, of course, but there is something truly special about dedicating oneself to saving lives and jumping out of helicopters into 20-foot seas to save anybody who needs it. So Full Sin Fleet is proud to acknowledge AST 3rd Class John Walton for being a badass. And this was his very first rescue swim. The crew randomly chose who would do the swim for this rescue. And Walton came out on top. Just taking a look at that one more time is mind blowing. Imagine your first time out in the Pacific Ocean, 20 foot waves, which means it could be 40 feet from the top of the wave to the bottom of the trough. Absolutely breathtaking. Not so bad for the first time out. Good job, sir. Good job. We salute you. Hey, if you like what you've seen, please hit the like button and check us out at Full Sin Fleet for more videos. And don't forget to send it.